Welcome to The Pulse, brought to you by MDT-TV. The world's first artificial larynx has been implanted, enabling the patient to regain the ability to breathe normally through the upper respiratory tract. The first step in the surgery was to remove the patient's larynx and implant a tracheal ring made of titanium. A few months later, the procedure was complete when a valve-based device was inserted through the patient's mouth. The device partially replicates the natural functions of the larynx, and the patient is able to breathe normally once again. One of the first places in the brain that degenerates in people with Alzheimer's disease is the front part of the temporal lobe, which develops from the smell system. So by testing a patient's ability to smell, researchers are now able to confirm diagnosis of early cases of the disease by using a dollop of peanut butter and a ruler. Why peanut butter? Well, this sandwich spread is a pure odorant, meaning that it is only detected by the olfactory nerve and is easy to access. There's been a lot of talk about sensors and smartphones for monitoring health, but separating itself from others on the market, a nanotech sensor startup, Adamant Technologies, is working to develop a chemical sensor that works like the human nose. As the user interacts with the phone, the sensor monitors chemical markers in the breath and relays the information to various applications on the smartphone. But what separates it from other sensors of its kind is that this one is based on the same principles as the human nose, using one sensor to measure all 300 chemicals in the breath. You probably wouldn't think to diagnose an eye disease with a urine test, but a new Duke University study says it can link what is in a patient's urine to G mutations that cause retinous pigmentosa, or RP, an inherited degenerative disease that results in severe vision impairment and often blindness. The mass spectrometry-based detection method will help physicians provide more personalized care to RP patients, especially those young children whose retinal degeneration has not fully developed. Talk of the government shutdown has been ubiquitous, but how is it affecting the medical industry? In a recent press conference, the American Society for Cell Biology Executive Director told reporters that shutting down the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation will have effects well beyond the days or weeks of the Capitol Hill standoff. The effects were obvious on the first day of the shutdown when researchers at the National Institute of Health were given four hours to close up their labs before being sent home. The shutdown has put a halt to new funding initiatives, the peer review process, reviews of existing grant applications, and no payments will be made during the closure. For more medical technology news, go to mdtmag.com. And until next week, I'm Melissa Fassbender, and this has been The Pulse.